teaching, we're learning, living for today. So tomorrow, we'll show them all the way to the city. Well, is there any particular reason you're sitting on my bed? <laughs> you must be uh, Francis de Pesta. <laughs> Rock Rocco. <laughs> uh, do you actually want us to call you Rocco? Very astute there, coach. I see. Well, um, where are your roommates? Uh, that, that's Jeff, and I'm Keith. Uh, <laughs> Look, is something bothering you? Too much Jolt Cola. <laughs> you really want to know? I just spent five hours looking for a job. They tell me they're looking for somebody with experience. Like it takes a whole lot of experience to stick shampoo bottles on a shelf or dump french fries into a deep fryer. Yeah, well, you know what they say. Uh, no experience, no job. No job, no experience. You could always try the army. <laughs> They're not interested in what kind of experience I got. Because you know what else I've been hearing all day? We're not hiring. We're talking about places that have big now hiring signs right in the window. Uh, well, um, we were just reading the information sheet about you here. Um, so I guess you're a comp lit major. Comparative literature. Like you major in comparing boring books? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Pesto, but we're just not hiring at this time. Not hiring anybody that looks like me, that is. That they wouldn't hire anybody from my neighborhood. So, Rocco, uh, if you don't mind my asking, you got any particular woman situation going on at this time? It's complete prejudice, that's what it is. Discrimination, you know, I can't believe it. Wait a minute. Wait. I can't believe it. It's that St. Francis College case all over again. 42 U.S. Code 191A does apply in such situations, giving the plaintiff a right to a jury trial and punitive damages. <laughs> you don't say. Punitive <laughs> damages. I could pay my tuition all the way through grad school. Oh, are, are you planning to go to law school? I mean, you seem to know a lot about the law. Huh? What? Oh. No, listen, man. Grad school, law school, any sort of that stuff, it's for dropouts from the school of life. Mm. I just plan on getting my bachelor's in partying, because, you know, I'm a partying kind of bachelor. <laughs> well, I'm in uh, biochemistry myself. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> well, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that, you know, having an active social life is important, too. You know? <laughs> What? In high school, your social life would have to have gotten 50 times more active before it could even qualify as dead. And every time a female type got within 100 yards of this guy, he'd get petrified. I, I mean, we're talking like wood fiber from the Paleolithic age here. Triassic. What? Triassic period. Petrified wood is much older than the Paleolithic. Jeez. <laughs> You're gonna have to change your ways, my friend. But don't worry. Jeff McCormick knows all and tells all in the science of attracting beautiful women. And who knows? Maybe even Rocco here can give you a few pointers. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Hello? Greetings, fellow residents of the third floor. Greetings. <laughs> Someone on the room assignment committee must really like me in order to put me on the same floor with such a, well, if you don't mind my saying so, such a bodacious woman. <laughs> Thank you, I think. <laughs> I'm Alice.
Kelly Masterson. I live down the hall. My name's Jeff. Jeff McCormick. Pleased to meet you, Jeff. The pleasure's all mine. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Keith. Keith Phillips. <laughs> Getting better, Keith. Hi. <laughs> um, who's your friend? Oh, uh, th 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 that's uh, Rocco. Um, he's a comparative literature major. <laughs> uh huh. Hi, Rocco. But, but who cares about him, really, when we could be talking about us? You and me? As in uh, whether or not you're free for dinner tonight. Uh, oh, um, well, I appreciate the invitation, Jeff, but I'm working tonight. Oh, really? Where do you work? I wait tables at the Varsity Cafe. It's just down the street. How criminal. I mean, a supreme instance of femalehood such as yourself should not have to wait tables on a Friday night. <laughs> you know, my, my sister was a waitress one summer. <laughs> that, that, that's nice, Keith. You know, Allie, I, I could forge you a note from the help service and you could call in sick. Come on. Wouldn't you rather be wined and dined than have to carry around someone else's coke and fries? We're short-staffed right now. We just lost Igor. <laughs> Our bus boy. He made off with a gross of hamburger meat, and we've all had to work extra to cover for him. Just one minute. Mr. Pesto. Oh, Mr. Pesto. <laughs> pesto, pesto. Pesto, pesto. Oh, Mr. Pesto. <laughs> Can you remember Einstein's last name? Uh, Einstein. Good. Then maybe you're smart enough to remember my last name. Rocco. Rocco what? De Pesta. What? De Pesta. Good. Fifty times. De Pesta, 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 De Pesta. I really think you ought to talk to Allie. De Pesta, 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 I'm Allie. De Pesta, De Pesta, De Pesta. You must be Rocco. De Pesta. I think that's 50. I live down the hall. Great. I don't often get to meet a man who reads Scientific American for fun. Oh, I do. <laughs> uh, well, that's not really a Scientific American. I, I just stapled that cover onto a rodent track. You know, professors don't get so mad if they catch you reading a Scientific American in class. That's a great idea. You know, Ali, Rocco's looking for work. You might want to tell him about the situation over at the cafe. Well, we're really desperate for a busboy where I work, at the Varsity Cafe. It's not the most thrilling job in the world, but a job's a job. Yeah, sounds great to me. Yeah, uh, well, so what's your major? <laughs> well, because I thought that if, you know, maybe if you were taking some biochemistry classes or something, we could study together. <laughs> well, um, it's really been nice meeting you guys. <laughs> um, see you later, huh? 8.30 a.m., Rocco? Whatever you say. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what's your major? <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> All the pickles, all the lettuce, hamburgers are my big fetish. Oh, my God, that's your lettuce. Oh, go fry some lard, Charante. We're not open yet. Hey, Fonzie, this ain't Arnold's. Why don't you go back to Milwaukee? We're closed. even-tempered person you'll ever meet. Yeah, so I see. There's Mr. Littman. Let me get him. So are, uh, you good friends with Allie? Actually, we just met last night. Oh, really? Well, let me warn you. From someone who knows, she's bad news. You know, she'll pretend to be your friend, but you know she really isn't. You know, the backstabbing, gossipy type. <laughs> Rocco, this is Mr. Ed Littman, owner of the Varsity Cafe. Mr. Littman, Rocco de Pesta. I'll let you two talk. 
Do you two have something better to do? Move it, Charante. Have a seat. Ah, uh, so, Rocco. Allie tells me you are an aspiring busboy. Mm, yes, it's been a dream of mine, especially getting to wear one of those snappy little bow ties. <laughs> yes, well, Mr. DePesta, judging from your appearance, your ultimate career goal seems more on the lines of engine parts and grease rags and dip sticks. Oh, oh yes? Yeah? yeah? So manager you must be. Uh, hiring a busboy that takes up with a couple hundred pounds of meat? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. DePesta. Gotcha there. <laughs> you can be absolutely certain that I will never hire a hellcat like you. Ooh, well, them harsh words there, Mr. Ed. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, but not a cat. Not now, Charante. <laughs> but, uh, when you use the word hellcat, I'm sure that you intend to use it in its first definition, a person who torments others for me. However, you fail to realize that there is a second definition, a bad-tempered and evil woman, a hellcat, that applies to Frida, and not to me at all. So uh, perhaps you better take that up with her now. Goodbye, Jack. <laughs> Wait a second, Rocco. You're not really trying to get this job, are you? What are you talking about? Do you still want to work here? Yeah, what, are you serious? Yes. In fact, you can start immediately. Great. Hey, listen, uh, do I have to wear one of those bow ties? <laughs> Working hard, and I noticed that in employees. You keep it up, and there's going to be room for you to move. Oh, thanks, Ed. Frida. Yes, Mr. Littman. You have a set of keys, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. Well, give them to Rocco. He's going to lock up tonight and open up in the morning. <laughs> uh, Mr. Littman. Yes, Frida. I usually lock up. I've been locking up since I started working here. I know, and Rocco's going to lock up tonight. And if this works out, we're going to see about delegating this responsibility to you on a more permanent basis. <laughs> Mr. Lemon, uh, is there something wrong with the way I've been locking up? I mean, if I'm doing something wrong, just tell me and just give me a chance to change it. Because it's not fair for you to, to take away the keys from me and, and, and nobody tell me what I did wrong. Frida, there's nothing wrong with your performance. In fact, why don't you stay tonight and show Rocco the routine? <sighs> Mr. Lemon, yes. you don't even know if you can trust him yet. Because he just started. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't think you should have the keys, Mr. Lippman. I, I just don't think you should. <laughs> Mr. Lippman. End of discussion. Show Rocco how to lock up, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning. Good night, everybody. See you at the door, Rocco? Yeah, definitely. Right.
Way to have gone, Rocco Bullwinkle. It was better than cats. I'd see it again and again. I'm so tired we had this clan together. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Hey, uh, listen, you know, you, you don't have to stick around. I mean, I can figure out how to use the keys all by myself. I doubt it. Finish sweeping the floor, and then I'll show you how I lock up. I'm finished. Well, I'm not. I have to finish totaling these receipts. I'm gonna have to tell Mr. Lipman how that tablecloth got dirty. Look, will you relax? Ed likes me. You know, he is giving me the keys to the place after Mr. all. Mr. Lippman just wants me to train you. It's not like you're anything special. One, two, three, four, five. Eight, seven, two, six, five, thirty-three, eighty-four. Ha, ha, funny. Look, what makes you think you're so much cooler and so much smarter and so much better looking than anybody else here? <laughs> you know, you're not going to get very far with that attitude, mister. You want to get ahead anywhere, especially here. You're going to have to start showing people some respect. You don't call Mr. Lipman Ed. <laughs> you don't make fun of people for doing their job, and you should listen to what I tell you. Because you might learn something. Yeah, I might learn to be anal retentive. Just be responsible with those keys. Look, 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 look. Why don't you be responsible and leave before I do something stupid and blame it on you? Huh? Fine, fine. You're so smart. You're so in control. Go ahead and finish locking up by yourself. Just don't do anything stupid with my keys. <laughs> What a twit. <laughs> Just don't do anything stupid with my keys. <laughs> don't do anything stupid with my keys. Don't do anything stupid with my keys. Don't do anything stupid with my keys. Hey, don't do anything stupid with my keys. <laughs> oh, well, come on, Frida's keys. I think we're gonna go do something stupid. Axel and Ludwig, <laughs> two musical geniuses side by side. <laughs> oh, Keith, Keith, you gotta listen to this. I just figured out how to play Purple Haze on my kazoo. Take a listen. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hey, Rocco. What are you still doing at work? A party? Cool. Uh-huh. Uh Ooh. Sounds nasty. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, I'll help out. Okay, then. All right, I'll see you later, then. All right, bye-bye. So what's up with Rocco? Some waitress named Frida. Rocco said she's been on his case all day. But get this. Rocco's got her keys to the place. So to Spider, he's throwing a huge party there tonight, and he wants us to, like, make up flyers and put them up all over the place. Oh, no, 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 Jeff, I don't know. If, if Rocco gets caught, then we could be charged as co-conspirators to the crime, and I, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, would you relax? Now, come on, let's make those flyers. But, but what happened to my kazoo? <laughs> no, 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 Allie. You misunderstand me. It's not that I dislike you, Scarf. What a question is your judgment as far as your blouse, scarf, jumper combination is concerned. I mean, yes, things are tonal this fall, but I don't think you've grasped that yet, Anne. Please. She came to pick me up, and I made the mistake of asking her how I looked. So, you must be Rocco. <laughs> I, I could tell just by looking at you. Anne, I don't think Rocco is interested in your personality assessment of him based on his clothes. Oh, no, 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 Allie, it's cool. Let's see how close she gets. <clears throat> well, Rocco, I can tell that you're trans-bohemian with brains, daring, a touch of the mysterious. I think you're hiding a 
a lot of your true sounds. <laughs> and did you figure all that out just from what I'm wearing? <laughs> of course! Child! Nothing that anyone wears can get by me. Well, naturally, Allie's a little skeptical, but oh my. Um, now, if you'll excuse me, I see a glaring folks post that I just can't let go on correcting. Trust me, she'll thank me for it later. <laughs> Jeez whiz, this party is out of control. Where I come from, we consider a table full of bendy toys and a bottle of rubber cement to be a good time. Did your parents let you have wild and crazy parties like this one? I never had any parents. What you talking about, Willis? I mean, buddy. Well, I was raised by trained dogs in a traveling circus, and I paid for my food and lodging with the sweat off my brow. The circus people would not take cash. <laughs> no. No, I guess not. <laughs> what does one do in the circus? Mostly I host elephants. Really? Where does one buy pantyhose for elephants? <laughs> Isn't it getting a little out of control? Oh, come on, Allie. Don't you like to cut loose every once in a while? There's a difference between cutting loose and cutting your throat. I mean, Mr. Lippman asked you to lock up, and instead you throw the place wide open and host a huge party. Rocco, does blatant disregard of trust mean anything to you? Come on. I'll, I'll mop up afterwards. Besides, how is Lippman ever going to find out? But Rocco... Oh, look, Allie, nothing's going to go wrong. Don't you worry about a thing. And, uh... If anything does go wrong, I'll just blame it all on you. Mm. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I saw y'all from across the room, and I just had to talk to y'all about your outfits. Okay. Acid wash denim is very acceptable, but um, acid jeans and jacket, isn't it very redundant? <laughs> I would like to be the first to congratulate you and applaud you on your choice of black for this evening's soiree. But, according to my Bible, color me beautiful, we may want to introduce some pastels to accentuate your summer skin tones. <laughs> so, tell me more about your glass eye and wooden leg, please. <laughs> well, it was one of the obvious hazards associated with sleeping in the lion's cage. What? You did not sleep with wild animals, did you? Because I was watching a movie the other day called Day of the Animals. It was a 1987 thriller in which backpackers are besieged by small ground animals. <laughs> Starring Tina Yothers. Closed caption, 97 minutes. Anyway, it was just horrible. You did not get hurt very much, did you? Oh, don't worry, Sharante. I have a way with animals. I would like to see pictures of that sometime. <laughs> hey, ladies. Freshmen. Freshmen. <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. This is Jeff McCormick and Keith Phillips. They live with Rocco. Guys, this is my friend Anne. Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> of course you are. Oh, the crowds. The noise. Is it warm in here? You look hot. Uh, you know, maybe you should open a window or something, you know? <laughs> Why don't you let us take you away from all this? Uh, maybe some other time. <laughs> it smells like something's burning. Oh, my God. It smells like khakis or bows. <laughs> Whose trousers are on the grill? Aren't you lucky tonight, Anne? Two fabulous escorts, all for your very own. Yes. Well, excuse me while I go count my blessings. <laughs> Gee, uh, college isn't all that different from high school after all, is it? <laughs> Hello, Rocco. This is Frida. Unlock the cafe at 7 tomorrow. By the way, I'm sorry if I yelled at you today. <laughs> Hello, Rocco. This is Frida. <laughs> Unlock the cafe at 7 tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, I'm sorry if I yelled at you today. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? 
Hello, is Rocco there? Gotcha. <laughs> this is the answering machine. Jerk. You reached Jeff, Rocco, and Teeth. But we're not here right now. We're at the Varsity Cafe. The cafe's closed. Rocco's throwing a party to celebrate having the keys to the restaurant. What? That's right. It's the Rocco's Got the Keys party. So come on, <laughs> join us. Oh, uh, unless you're Frida. <laughs> Rocco is going to be so sorry. Keith, you Casanova, you. I think she wants you. Really? How can you tell? She just closed her eyes. Go ahead, make your move. Should I? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's okay. No, I shouldn't. Well, you're a real romantic. Is that what you like? Romantic guys? I didn't say that. Mm, intellectual types? Not necessarily. Well, the type of guy that can tell you stuff like, when do I see the most beloved one? <laughs> when in the light the spirit of mine eyes before thy face their altar, solemnize the worship of their love for thee made known. You've read Dante Gabriel Rossetti? Uh, no. No, actually, I never heard of him. I, just got that off the bathroom wall at the library. That's good, though, isn't it? Sweet baby Jesus, here comes Sheila. Baby, she looks steamy. Oh, God. All right, turn off the music and hide, everybody. Just hide. Open up, Rocco. I know you're in there. Um. Come on, I can smell you from down the street. Uh, who is it? It's Frida, you nitwit. Who'd you think it was? Oh, OK, just a minute. Let me slip into something more comfortable. What am I gonna do? I don't know. You're the one who controls. I don't know. Uh, so, Rocco, we're putting in a little overtime, aren't we? Gee. Uh, well, now, I wasn't aware Mr. Littman hired all these extra people to help him out after hours. You know, I think I'll call him now and no. let him know how hard working his employees Frida, are. Frida, come on. Just no, me. that's all right, Frida. I'm here. Mr. Lincoln, I'm sorry. I'm hey, not... come on, where's the music? Can't have a party without music, come on! Mr. DePesta, I'd like to speak with you. <laughs> this party was your idea, right? Yeah. Your first day on the job, and you think you'd celebrate the little party in my cafe, is yeah. that it? Yeah. So you put up flyers all over campus inviting the entire student body, is that it? Yeah. Well, it looks like you got quite a turnout here, Rocco. Yeah. <laughs> did you charge admission? Yeah. How much did you make? About a hundred bucks. Hand it over. Come on. All right. Rocco, I'm gonna have to make a deal with you. One for you. <laughs> and one for me. And one for you. And one for me, and one for you. And one for me, and one for you, and for me, for me, and for me. Hey, just relax. The Varsity Cafe will be right back. I sure can't get over what happened last night. Yeah, who would have thought that Rocco would have gotten away with just, just a slap on the hand from Littman? Hey, Littman's a profit man. He must have realized that hosting late night parties is a great way to make a quick buck. Yeah, well, Rocco lucked out. Hey, he's not the only lucky one around here. Look at what I found. <laughs> <laughs>
children now teaching 